Section 6 of The Phenomenology of Mind, Volume 2, by George Wilhelm Friedrich Hegel. Translated by James Black Bailey. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by phone. Chapter 6b. Spirit in Self-Estrangement. The Discipline of Culture. The ethical substance preserved and kept opposition enclosed within its simple conscious life, and this consciousness was in immediate unity with its own essential nature. That nature has therefore the simple characteristic of something merely existing for the consciousness which is directed immediately upon it, and whose custom, Zite, it is. Consciousness does not stand for a particular excluding self, nor does the substance mean for it an existence shut out from it, with which it would have to establish its identity only through estranging itself, and yet at the same time have to produce that estrangement. But that mind, whose self is absolutely insular, absolutely discreet, finds its content over against itself in the form of a reality that is just as impenetrable as itself, and the world here gets the characteristic of being something external, negative to self-consciousness. Yet this world is a spiritual reality, it is essentially the fusion of individuality with being. This, its existence, is the work of self-consciousness, but likewise an actuality immediately present and alien to it, which has a peculiar being of its own, and in which it does not know itself. This reality is the external element and the free content of the sphere of legal right. But this external reality, which the master of the world of legal right takes control of, is not merely this elementary irreducible entity casually lying before the self. It is his work, but not in a positive sense, rather negatively so. It preserves its existence by self-consciousness of its own accord relinquishing itself and giving up its essentiality, the condition which, in that waste and ruin which prevail in the sphere of right, the external force of the elements let loose seem to bring upon self-consciousness. These elements by themselves are sheer ruin and destruction, and cause their own overthrow. This overthrow, however, this their negative nature, is just the self. It is their subject, their action, and their process. Such process and activity, again, through which the substance becomes actual, are the alienation of personality, for the immediate self, that is, the self without estrangement and holding good as it stands, is without substantial content, and the sport of these raging elements. Its substance is thus just its relinquishment, and the relinquishment is the substance, that is, the spiritual powers forming themselves into a coherent world, and thereby securing their subsistence. The substance in this way is spirit, self-conscious unity of the self and the essential nature, but both also take each other to mean and to imply alienation. Spirit is consciousness of an objective reality which exists independently on its own account. Over against this consciousness stands, however, that unity of the self with the essential nature, consciousness pure and simple over against actual consciousness. On the one side, actual self-consciousness by its self-relinquishment passes over into the real world, and the latter back again into the former. On the other side, however, this very actuality, both person and objectivity, is cancelled and superseded. They are purely universal. This, its alienation, is pure consciousness, or the essential nature. The present has at once its opposite in its beyond, which consists in its thinking and its being thought just as this again has its opposite in what is here in the present, which is its actuality alienated from it. Spirit, in this case, therefore, constructs not merely one world, but a twofold world, divided and self-opposed. The world of the ethical spirit is its own proper present, and hence every power it possesses is found in this unity of the present, and so far as each separates itself from the other, each is still in equilibrium with the whole. Nothing has the significance of a negative of self-consciousness. Even the spirit of the departed is in the lifeblood of his relative, is present in the self of the family, and the universal power of government is the will, the self of the nation. Here, however, what is present means merely objective actuality, which has its consciousness in the beyond. Each particular moment, as an essential entity, receives this, and thereby actuality from another, and so far as it is actual, its essential being is something other than its own actuality. Nothing has the spirit self-established and indwelling within it. 
rather each is outside itself in what is alien to it the equilibrium of the whole is not the unity which abides by itself nor its inwardly secure tranquillity but rests on the alienation of its opposite the whole is therefore like each particular moment a self-estranged reality it breaks up into two spheres in one kingdom self-consciousness is actually both the self and its object and in another we have the kingdom of pure consciousness which being beyond the former has no actual present but exists for faith is matter of belief now just as the ethical world passes from the separation of divine and human law with its various forms and its consciousness gets away from the division into knowledge and the absence of knowledge and returns into the principle which is its destiny into the self which is the power to destroy and negate this opposition so too both these kingdoms of self-alienated spirit will return into the self but while the former was the first self holding good directly the particular person the second which returns into itself from its self-relinquishment will be the universal self the consciousness grasping the conception and these spiritual worlds all of whose moments insist on being a fixed reality and an unspiritual subsistence will be dissolved in the light of pure insight this insight being the self-grasping itself completes the stage of culture it takes up nothing but the self and everything as the self that is it comprehends everything extinguishes all objectiveness and converts everything implicit into something explicit everything which has a being in itself into what is for itself when turned against belief against faith as the faraway region of inner being lying in the distant beyond it is enlightenment aufklärung this enlightenment also terminates self-estrangement in this region where their spirit in self-alienation turns to seek its safety as to a region where it becomes conscious of a peace adequate to itself enlightenment upsets the household arrangements which spirit carries out in the house of faith by bringing in the goods and furnishings belonging to the world of the here and now a world which that spirit cannot refuse to accept as its own property for its conscious life likewise belongs to that world in this negative task pure insight realizes itself at the same time and brings to light its own proper object the unknowable absolute being and utility since in this way actuality has lost all substantiality and there is nothing more implicit in it the kingdom of faith as also that of the real world is overthrown and this revolution brings about absolute freedom the stage at which the spirit formerly estranged has gone back completely into itself leaves behind this sphere of culture and passes over into another region the land of the inner or subjective moral consciousness moralischen bewusstsein end of section six recording by phone